Well, things did change. They were all internal. <clears throat> my my whole desire for <clears throat> travel and adventure, it was still there at some level, but it wasn't what was prompting me. I got involved uh, <clears throat> with an older man who was uh, <clears throat> a Christian that uh, had rented a building down on Northside, an old building. And on Sunday afternoons, he had a lot of kids that came for a Sunday school lesson. He is, and his wife and daughter taught the lessons. And he invited me to come down. I'd only known Christ for about a month. Anyway, I went down and I didn't really want to go. I felt funny. Why do I want to go down to Northside? Um, it, it didn't seem like anything I wanted to do, but I felt really prompted to do it. I was so glad I did. So I sat through that meeting. He, he taught the lesson. It was a Bible story. Sitting next to me was a six-year-old girl. Uh, she had really blonde hair. It looked like she stuck her finger in an electric socket and whoosh, the hair went in all different directions. And I remember looking at her and thinking, I wonder if she's an angel. <laughs> she looks like an angel. Well, anyway, only to say that I really fell in love with that place, with that old man and his family, and with this little, uh, it was a Sunday school with all these kids. And I started going. He let me teach, uh, which surprised me. I didn't really know that much about the Bible, but he coached me through it. He was kind of like a mentor to me. Uh, well, as time went on, uh, I began to meet some of the family members of these little kids. And I remember one day being on a street, and there were three guys standing on a street corner, and I walked up to them and introduced myself. One of them said, I know, you, you that guy has got that Sunday school down there. I said, well, actually, we do. He said, well, my little sister goes there. And um, he told me who it was, and I recognized her. I said, what do you guys do around here for fun? And a big guy said, we fight. And I said, who do you fight? Anybody. Where do you fight? <laughs> Wherever they are. And I said, is this for real? And they said, yep, that's what we do. That's what we like to do. I said, have you ever boxed? You ever done any boxing? Well, not the kind of stuff you're talking about. I said, would you like to do that? All right. Where are we going to do it? Well, we had this old building we rented, and we put up a makeshift ring in the basement of the thing. It had a dirt floor down there. And so every Saturday morning, these guys with their buddies would come down to box. We had gloves and the whole bit. Um, that went on for several weeks. But the deal was, you stay for boxing, you got to stay for a little message from the Bible. And I would tell a Bible story, and it always focused on Christ and Christ's delight to bring people to himself. Uh, that lasted for about two months, and um, it, the boxing part just wasn't that professional enough and all fell apart. But we started an adventure club that went on for several years. Uh, where on weekends I'd take these guys someplace and do something adventurous. Like one of the things we did is march through Mount Airy Forest. And the rule was you couldn't go around something. You had to go over it or under it. But you couldn't go to the left or right. First obstacle we came to the first time we did it was a big, huge bush. And there was a swarm of bees in the top of the bush. And the kids said, we're not going through that bush. I said, yeah, you are. We're all going through that bush. Just crash through it. So we all crashed through the bus. Nobody got stung. But that's the kind of stuff we did. It was so much fun. Anyway, that developed uh, finally into a church. We actually planted a church. And families of those kids started coming. And there's some really neat stories that came out of that adventure of working with those families. We were there for 18 years, my wife and I. It was such an adventure. Now the question is, how did I figure out who I was? Well, who was I? What was my identity? All of a sudden, I realized I was a created being. I wasn't my own boss. There was a king over my life. There was a creator God, somebody who sustained me. He had authority over me. There was a heavenly father. He was like the perfect father, and he was, he was my father to take care of me and mature me and grow me up so I'd become a mature adult. Uh, he was my master, and I was his servant. And all these things started 
to take hold of my soul. And all of a sudden I realized freedom was something that I'd been given. I was in bondage before. I wanted adventure and I had it and I enjoyed it. I, I was never, I never felt like I got cheated on that. But now I found out who I was. I was somebody who was set free from myself, set free from all the junk stuff that's out there in the world that drags us all down. I was free from that. Now I was free to love God, know Him, respect Him, spend time with Him, get close to Him and let Him get close to me. It was a newfound freedom. So who was I? Well, I discovered I was me. I was God's property. He's the one that created me. He's the one that protected me. And now he was the one that was giving me marching orders. And those marching orders was to learn as much as I could about Jesus Christ and by faith to appropriate his grace, his gift, his presence to help me become more like Christ. It involved serving. It involved being with other people. It involved transcending my own desires, which always led me to adventure. And now these desires are leading me to reality. I was true, truly what the Bible says, a new man in Christ. More later.